Okay, so this is my live setup. It's very minimal than a lot of live setups you'll see. Um, I've spent a few years kind of fine-tuning it down to the size it is now because it's really handy. I can fit it all in my little suitcase and take off and it's uh, under the, the weight limit which most airlines have and all that kind of thing. So I can, it's, it's really, really handy to get about and be portable. Um, I'm going to show you some tricks, uh, how I perform live, how I go about it, um, what makes it different than DJing and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, okay, so first up, this is my laptop. She's really good. She's, um, this is, this is the brains of the whole thing. This is, uh, I guess this is, this is where I store all my, all my sounds that I create. So I have, I have two modes of production. I have my kind of creative mode where I sit down and I come up with all these ideas and loops and drums and samples and synth lines and all these things and I sit down and I come up with all those. Then I've got this other mode which is my performance preparation mode where I sit down and take all those things that I've made in the production mode, put them into my, um, my program which I'll show you in a minute and kind of layer them all together, figure out what sits good with what, uh, how I could progress through a set. So um, if you look up here, this is uh, Ableton Live 6. This is the software that I use. It's my preferred choice of uh, software. It's really, really good um, for live situations. It's made for live situations. And basically what it does is it allows me to grab all the loops and samples and sounds and ideas which I've created you know, back home on my computer it allows me to reach in and grab them, stick them in, layer them on top of each other, stick them all up together, merge them, mess with them, glitch them out. It's, it's great. It's, it's, it's like a canvas, you know, and I can just take all these elements that I've created and uh, interact them with each other. So um, as you can see here, I've got, it, it works in a kind of a layering system. I've got about 13 layers here. Some of my tunes will go up to 20 or 30. Some of them are nice and simple down down to 13. I think there's a few more layers past there, but anyway. Um, so I've got my bass, I've got my kick, I've got my, I call this an X filter, this is kind of sound effects and things like that. This is percussion, another percussion, a synth line, another synth line, and then I've got a few other ones which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, yeah, so I'll start off quite simply. I mean, this, this is all running off my uh, laptop, which is the brains, as I said, this is, this is where it all happens. And these other two pieces of gear I use to control the brains, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start this loop here, which is called uh, intro format. Um, this is just a nice, simple intro kind of sound, which I'm going to use to kickstart the whole show. Um, if you see, I'll put my headphones on so I can hear. If you see um, up on the screen here, if I click this little play button, what it's going to do is it's going to start this loop and it's just going to keep looping it until I tell it to stop. So let's see what happens. So there we go, that's my intro format loop. Right? And it's just a really, it's a side trance tune by the way, if you don't mind. Um, so that's all good. Um, I'm going to bring in a kick, just give it a bit of a uns uns uns. So if you look over here on this kick channel here, I've got four loops and this first one which is called 4-4. That just brings in a nice standard 4-4 kick, so I'll trigger that. So I got myself a, um, got myself a nice kick. Um, rather than clicking all around the place and triggering all these loops with my mouse, it looks really, really, really boring when you're playing live, and um, it's not as much fun. So what I've got is I've got this machine here, which is called a Korg Pad Control, and this is a, it's a MIDI controller with got these buttons here and all these buttons are assignable to elements on my computer so I could hit a button it would send a message to my computer and say start playing this stop playing this glitch this out do all, you can basically assign it to any element within this program which is really really handy so what I've got is I've got these four buttons here assigned to these four kick loops here so if I was to hit this one it would double up or not here we go there we go so I've got double kick, and if I was to hit this one, it's going to go really fast. And so these next rows I've got as bass lines, and this one up here I've got as a crash in. So if I was to hit all three of these at once, it's going to kick in with a kick again, the bass line's going to drop, and it's going to have a crash symbol to give it a bit of a... So let's see that. 
There we go. So I've kind of got a, got a, got a bit of a tune on the way now. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this C intro format. I'm going to move down to this one, C sharp, snare, close hat. The reason I've got C, C sharp, D, D sharp up the scale is because I use this, which is the Novation X Station. Um, it's a MIDI controller synthesizer. I'm going to use the MIDI controller part to control all my percussion loops. Um, I use all the keys on the keyboard. So if I was to hit C sharp, that intro format's going to stop and the snare and the closed hat's going to kick in. So let's see that. So as you can see, this one started, this one stopped, and now I've got a snare. But that's quite boring, so I'm going to move it up to D, which is uh, open hats a snare, but more interesting. Sweet. So I've got a nice kind of percussion bass, drums. That's kind of the foundations for, for my tune. And um, actually, I'm going to change that bass line to something a bit more funky. I'm going to change it to the next one, 1153. That's just what I've called it, I don't know why. So let's change it to that. Actually, no, that went to bouncy full on, but that'll do. So that's quite a, quite a funky thing. Um, right, now let's get some synth stuff happening. So it's all, it's all good, but let's get some something melodic in there. So if I skip across a page, over to the next set of presets on my pad control, which is uh, number two. What I can do is I can hit these and it'll start these stabs down here. So if I hit number one, it goes. There we go. Then we've got stab two underneath it, sign to the next button. Here we go. And stab three. And stab four. And I'm going to start on channel 8, this tech loop as well. Keep, keep that going. So, so we're starting to get a tune happening now. Okay. And um, so what I've also got here is I've got, all, I've got these sliders, and these basically control the volumes of all these channels. So say if I wanted to take the kick and the bass out, I could go bring them back in, like that, um, I could take this, so that's the um, volume of that tech loop that's happening here. I've also got buttons here which I can completely stop the channels altogether. so now we've only got channel 8 going which is the tech loop. Yeah, so that's how I layer up my sounds, how I progress through my tunes, I've got all access here, I can flick about. Uh, glitch things up, flick around, as you'll see a little bit later on. And we have some footage of me actually playing to a crowd. Um, now what I'm going to show is, um, that's, that's the basic progression, the foundations of how I play my live set. But there's all kinds of tricks and things that I do for each individual track. Um, I've kind of learnt how to use this gear in my own way. This is the thing, you see, because like, nobody ever teaches it this stuff, so I've kind of taught myself from scratch, as I imagine most live musicians have, so I've kind of developed my own style of using it how I like.